This is my favorite thing that I've ever made. Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, Liz Plipsy DIY, and this is a MIDI guitar. This is another project that I collabed with Noe Ruiz from Adafruit on. Uh, he designed all this magical 3D printed and uh, milled acrylic goodness, uh, and I took care of the code, and we collaborated on how would this work? How would we do this? A MIDI guitar? How? Who? How? Uh, so obviously the design is, if you ever play Guitar Hero, it's based pretty heavily on that. In fact, I even did a teardown of my Guitar Hero controller and really photographed all the mechanisms, the, the whammy bar mechanism, the strumming mechanism, everything, so that we could get an idea of how they were accomplishing what they were doing with those controllers. Because really, when you think about guitar being translated to kind of an electronic device, um, I personally think that's probably the best uh, representation of it because you get the strumming action. It's just hard. Guitars are hard to translate to like a digital input device. Um, keyboards from a piano, it's fairly simple because it's a, it's a press. And uh, even um, woodwind instruments, now you can do kind of the breath control sensors and everything. But guitar, it's just... And bass, string instruments, it's just, it's hard. It's just tricky. Uh, so we decided to kind of base it on a Guitar Hero guitar. Uh, we went with Cherry MX switches for the neck. Um, I went with Speed Reds. I can, I can demo it, I don't know why. Uh, and I think they, they feel great. Uh, and then there's just so much going on with this. Uh, so we have a... Uh, Grand Central M4 board, which is basically like the CircuitPython equivalent to a uh, Mega board, the Arduino, the big boys, yeah. Uh, and then there for the hardware on here, there's a potentiometer in the whammy, and that's controlling pitch bend. Pretty cool. Uh, so there's a potentiometer like mounted on the side in there. And then we've got switches here, because you can do this. Or you can do this, affectionately known as strum mode. There is also uh, modulation, where I can either control modulation with just the pot right here, or there is an LIS 3DH breakout sensor here for me to fruit in the neck, and I can do this. Which is pretty awesome. Uh, so if you wanted to get really performative, you totally could. And then there's also velocity, which matters more if you're like recording MIDI data, because it can definitely make it sound more human, especially if you're doing drums. Uh, and then you know you don't want to be limited to just an octave. Nah, man, you gotta. You could, in theory, have all the MIDI notes that are available to you in here. It's all programmed in. I also made it so that you can type in the note names versus note numbers, which is handy. So if you, there are certain like drum patterns that you think would be better served by a different like orientation of the notes on these buttons, you can totally do that. It's all right. It's all good. Uh, and the way the strummer is working is these two like side switches. And so they're part of the, the plastic enclosure, the strum bar is actually hitting those switches when you strum up and down. And that was really, that was crazy that Noe was able to look at the teardown photos and model it. It just works. Same with the whammy. He modeled it straight from the pictures that I took and then we went from there. Uh, now there is one little lovely little extra that I think even looks nice from the back, yeah. Um, it's NeoPixels in here. Now this is, this is extra. So if like you want to build this project, obviously it's like kind of an intense project. Um, there is actually a feather, I use an M0, uh, in the neck that is controlling these NeoPixels. So it's running completely independent of the MIDI stuff. And there's even a switch on the side if you didn't want any lights. And I mean, that acrylic still looks fly as hell in the neck, like so good. And then you can just switch it back on and you got your lights. Uh, this is some special acrylic. I'll put the name on the screen cause it escapes me, but 
Uh, the Ruiz Brothers are all about it. Actually, I think almost everyone at Adafruit's all about it. Um, I know I milled it for me. I don't have a mill. Um, and basically just diffuses LEDs super nice, like just super great. They've done some other projects with it too. Uh, so good use of that. And uh, there will be obviously a learn guide because it's an AFRU project. Um, and there I also walk through the code and uh, Noe will go through all the assembly and the 3D printing files. I, th- I think the design of this is just kind of amazing. <laughs> I, like this is, this is crazy. Uh, and then the guitar is actually, you can't really tell, but, well, maybe you can at a certain angle. It's in segments. It's one, two, three, four, five, six segments, and they all fit on my Prusa bed. He designed it so that it would fit on basically anyone's printer, which is really, really good. So everyone will be able to print uh, this if they wanted to, which is awesome. Uh, the code is obviously in CircuitPython. Uh, I'm not going to go full in depth on that here because it's it's kind of standard stuff like I'm not doing anything too nuts I'm really not uh it's just using the circuit python midi library which if you've done any DIY midi stuff it's fairly um self-explained like it, it's just you know I, I press the note it sends the note on I release a note it sends note off uh there is a a moment where if I if, it, if the switch is engaged then obviously I hold down the note, nothing happens, but if I press down on the strum and this note's engaged, that sends the note on, I release, it turns it off. That's it. I don't, that's all. And then I'm constantly checking what the state of these knobs are, and that's just constantly sending it, I'm not saying it with the note on, so I can... Yeah, that's... That's it! Yeah. Uh, if you want to see how I kind of approached writing the code to this, I actually documented it on Diode Zone, uh, which is a PeerTube instance managed by Micah Scott. She does a great job running it. I love uploading content to that. You should check it out. Uh, and I put a lot of things up there that like I wouldn't put up on YouTube. Maybe I'm like working on something, or I just think it's kind of a cool thing, and I just want to share the video. So I will link down the playlist in the description for what, with what's on Diode Zone, so you can kind of see how I went about it, because once again, my tried and true practice of, hey, I want to do this thing. Let's start with just sending a note. Great, let's send two notes. This is a, this is a monophonic synth, so that's another good example, but you get the idea. And then just expanding from there, let's try pitch bend. Try the accelerometer. Yeah, like, that's it. Uh, but this is, Definitely my favorite thing I've ever worked on. Collaborating with Noe on this was just amazing. <laughs> Cause he took care of like the design things and I took care of the code stuff. And then we both talked about how we wanted all the electronics to be. So it really played to both of our strengths really uniquely because we both have experience with like MIDI things and wanting to like make instruments. So it was just really, fantastic. It was, it was great. Uh, so I'm just so hyped. And also like Flying V, Flying V, such like one of the most iconic guitar shapes. If you, if it doesn't remind you of 80s heavy metal, perhaps it reminds you of late 70s, early 80s shred. Um, if it doesn't remind you of that, perhaps you think of Hendrix. But yeah, uh, this is also an example of, it's a practical project, like being able to play this and have this very unique playing feel, like I'm not going to get this from anywhere else, you know? Uh, and But we had a lot of fun with it, and, like we made it like super custom, and I love projects like that. I love projects where you can do like really unique things, but it still ends up being practical in the end. So yeah, this is definitely my favorite as of right now, it's my it's my favorite project of all time. But that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing more content like this. Down in the description, I'll have links to everything you could ever possibly need, including the learn guide, which will have everything you could ever possibly need to make this project. Um, yeah, it's just, I'm hyped on it. And additionally, I'm not gonna go into details, but these are kind of some scary times we're in right now. 
Uh, and if you're from the future and you're looking at the date, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Working on this project for the past, uh, I think it's been about a month and a half. Like, it's been a nice escape. And I mean, that's why we do this, right? Have a little escape. Until next time, it's from Blitz City DIY.